Hey, this is John Yeager with another episode of Think Business. Today we have Candace Klein on our show. Candace is um, president of Klein Contracting and CEO of MetaTeam. Um, welcome, Candace. Thanks for joining us at Think Business. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you, John. You too. So tell me a little bit about uh, uh, Klein Contracting and then how how that relates to MetaTeam and, and, um, and give us a little background of how you got here. It's an interesting story, I know. Sure. So I am a commercial roofer. Klein Contracting is a commercial roofing company that has been around for 32 years. I'm the president of it. And as you can see, I'm female, which makes me kind of an anomaly in my field. Um, we do uh, commercial roofing only. Let me be clear because my friends will call and want me to do their houses and I can't help them. But what happened was we were looking at our market and my market is the Southeast United States. And we are certified as a woman-owned business. And we decided, you know, it's really not the best thing to service my clients' needs when I can only have a geographic fo geographical footprint that's about this big. And there are other wonderful women-owned roofing companies in other areas that also do amazing work that could service clients' needs. And we got to mulling this over, and a little birdie whispered in my ear, Put them all together. So what happened is I got together with two other really dynamic women-owned roofing companies and, amaz and an amazing other businesswoman. And the four of us created what is now the Meta Team. Uh, and Meta Team is a collaboration of three roofing companies that services 21 states. So we're a national footprint. We're all certified women-owned businesses. And what we're doing is we're serving the needs of our customers who are very focused on supplier diversity. So it's, um, it's a really great collaboration because there is no competition. Each of us is very strong in particular areas. So if we have a client's needs, for, exact, for example, if there's a solar need in my area, I'm gonna call up my partner who's an expert in that, and she's gonna be able to make sure that that client's needs are met. So we're... Um, and we're, we're broadening. There are other women in the field we're looking at in order to grow our footprint to all of the continental United States. That's awesome. So tell me, how did Candace Klein get into the roofing business? Well, asphalt. <laughs> you know, I mean, wow. <laughs> so my actual background is writing in IT. And um, I was working about 100 hours a week, every week. And I realized soon um, after college, that I had more dogs than friends. And my father had an asbestos abatement company. And he said, you know, why don't you join the family business? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> and this went back and forth for a long, long time. My dad would say, come and join. And I would say, no. Then when I realized I have no travel, no friends, but I do have lovely dogs and no social life, maybe it was time to take a different course. And so I did join the company business, but what happened at that time is um, our largest client was AT&T and we kept taking asbestos flashing out of roofs and they kept saying, why don't you put the roof system back? And we were growing market share in a diminishing market. So about, um, I, I won't say how many years because I'm not going to tell you my age, but a significant amount of time ago, um, we migrated from abatement to the commercial roofing market. Gotcha. So that, yeah, that's how I went from being in IT to being in roofing. And yes, everyone in the office still wants me to help them print. <laughs> Multi-flexibility in this world is a great thing. Oh, yeah. So I can roof and make you make your printer work effectively. So very good. Job security there, I think. Yeah, right. No, so I have C groups. Are you kidding <laughs> So how's it been to be a, uh, a woman-owned roofing company executive? How, do, how has that worked for you? Obviously, it's a male-dominated uh, sure. area. So how, how have you not migrated? How have you navigated the course there? So the people who are other fellow roofing professionals and our, our organization, the NRCA, uh, has amazing resources for you to meet other roofers, have educational opportunities, and to network. Uh, and to do risk management. So our national organization gave me the opportunity to learn and to grow and to meet other women. But for, I will tell you for a long time, if there were a room of 50, I would be the, the only woman you saw. And most people would mistake me for someone's spouse. And 
it's not that I haven't been somebody's spouse, but I was the actual person attending the conferences. Well, over time, I would suddenly see more women in there and naturally you would just strike up a conversation. So I have found roofing to actually be quite a friendly place when it comes to the industry itself. Now, being a minority in business, there are other things that, you know, there have been other moments that have been awkward, but I can honestly tell you the professionals that I've dealt with in roofing, and that these are professionals everywhere from lawyers to field experts to people who are insurance experts, bonding experts, they have all treated me with a great amount of respect and kindness. And, you know, if I've needed anything, they've been very happy to be very supportive. So part of the goal of MediTeam is to actually encourage other women and minorities to participate in our field because we have problems, opportunities, and we need brilliant minds from all walks of life to help us solve them. So we're hoping that by coming up front and saying, look, we've got a national women-owned business company, we would love to see more women and more of everyone participate in the roofing space. So tell me a little bit about the supplier diversity uh, you mentioned earlier. So obviously that's front and center these days. Um, and you, there's a national organization uh, that's supporting that, those efforts. Tell me a little bit about that effort. So um, the supplier diversity space is the space that is encouraging minorities to have businesses, to invest in their communities, and to grow. And the space that we are playing in is the private, the corporate side. So it is a series of Fortune 500 companies who've really devoted an enormous amount of talent and effort and patience and education. And they're generally filled with very, very kind people who wanna see your business succeed. Now that doesn't mean that your business is always a fit with another business and they will refer you or tell you appropriately or refer you to educational opportunities to help you with that. There are several certifying agencies depending on where you are. And as we're a women owned business, WeBank is our certifying agency. Uh, so you get credentialed with them first. And each certifying agency also has educational opportunities and help you succeed as a business. But where we really thrive, for example, um, is with our relationships. The supplier diversity people are looking for long-term relationships for people who really walk the talk. They invest back in their communities. They make sure that they are out there encouraging other people to participate and do business within the supplier diversity space. So I'm always looking for other minority people to do business with, whether that be purchasing, if that's an opportunity, whether personally, I, I go and I find another woman owned business who's doing something that is just phenomenal. I want to invest in their space. Absolutely. Um, so, um, speaking of that, so wanting to invest in, in other people's space, um, you being a, a, a woman-owned business, having gone through all the trials and tribulations of that, is there some advice you'd like to, to give to, to fellow uh, uh, women who'd like to be in the same space you are, to own a business and, and those kind of things? Absolutely. First of all, have great confidence that you can succeed because a lot of people are simply too afraid to start a business. And that is really unfortunate. There are a myriad of resources from the SBA and from these certifying agencies who again, want you to succeed. They'll help you with education. They will walk you through the certification process. They will help you take your talents and move to the next level. So I would strongly recommend that after you have a very strong business plan, and that's something you should share with other fellow business owners. And there's no reason why you can't go to a WeBank event, meet other fellow business owners and say, hey, can we have a cup of coffee and let me bounce some ideas off of you? Because that is why we are there. We're there to help the network succeed. So I'd strongly recommend you get in touch with one of those agencies, have, you know, all, everything's virtual now, so you can attend things virtually or ask for somebody who may be in your space, like construction, give them a call. Uh, there's no one whose phone, who's, who's called me that I've turned away if they've wanted to ask for help or advice. And it's given me an opportunity to meet other people particularly in the construction space that I can use as a resource too. So it's, you know, get involved with the network, talk to people and allow them to help you understand what the journey can look like 
and use the resources that are free and available to you. But don't be afraid. Now, jump in. Jump I in the water more. I know it's weird with a pandemic, but the water. <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Makes sense. And so that, that kind of leads me to my really final question, which is, and, the, and I would be remiss without asking it, how, how has business been in the past three or four months for you? Strange. You know, um, certainly I, in my space in construction, I have struggled to make sure that I have adequate PPE and adequate training for all of my people. We, we do our own work. We don't subcontract labor, so we have our own workforce. My job is to make sure that they work in a very safe environment every day. They have the best knowledge they can about everything that is going on. So every time any resource comes available, we make sure it's in the field, whether it be hand washing stations, masks, any kind of protection, as well as making sure that people understand how this virus spreads so that they can be safe. So it has been, it's added a, a unique dimension because it's not just your people, it's who your people interact with. I want my clients to be safe. And what we do is dangerous, right? We have to take a myriad of safety precautions to begin with, but we wanna make sure that everyone we're interacting with is at a safe distance, understands our hand washing protocols. And so it's just added um, another dimension, but I'm very fortunate that our people were pretty safe to begin with. So they were very open uh, to the cultural shift. Everyone pivoted and adapted very quickly. So that has been, you know, fun. Yep. <laughs> fun because everyone's safe and I want them to continue to operate in a safe environment and go home and be with their families and their loved ones. Absolutely. And, and obviously one of the big changes coming out of this is the big work from home movement. That obviously is not going to impact your business that much because you know, the, the contractors can't really work from home. They need to work on site. So yes. is there something that you've seen coming out of this that you think, hey, three years from now, I'll look back, I'll say, yeah, that was something I instituted during the pandemic and is still going. Anything? Yeah. Training, training is greatly affected by that. We're able to do a lot more, use a lot more resources online, whereas usually they were done in person. And I think that that allows me to train more uh, have more people immediately exposed to better solutions. And I think that has been a very positive aspect. Technology has really stepped forward in this crisis. And I'm so grateful that so many different companies are giving us a platform to do these kinds of things. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to wrap this up and give you one last opportunity to, to tell how people can reach you um, uh, if they're looking for your services um, and, um, and say anything else you want to say. Um, well, of course, I'm Candace Klein at KleinContracting.com, but the big dog is MetaTeam Incorporated. So anyone can reach me there online. I'm easy to find. You just click contact and here I am. Happy to talk to you about, especially if you're a woman looking to get in business. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm wrapping this up. Uh, another episode of Think Business. Thank you all for listening and watching. I uh, hope you got something good out of it. Again, I'm John Yeager, uh, Managing Director of Beta Thrasher. Um, you can find us at btcpa.net um, and hashtag Think Business is, is the place where you can find me on, on most social media. So I look forward to uh, more conversations and much luck to you in the future, Candice. Thank you.